Yeah. 
storms of life may press me so, and trials come each day. With Jesus as my Savior, with Jesus as your Savior, with Jesus as a Savior. morning. It's our turn to sing together and we are beginning this morning with hymn number 264 from our S, S and S. 264. You are welcome to the house of the Lord on this beautiful Lord's Day. We pray that um, the Lord whom we have come here to meet, he knew you were coming and he was here before you got here. Yeah is going to bless each and every one of us. Amen. For our internet audience, you are also very welcome, wherever you are right now. We are happy and glad and we appreciate the fact that you have decided to enjoy this service with us. May the Lord who is here with us be with you wherever you are. Amen. But in case you are visiting locally or you are just around the corner, this is just to let you know that this is the... Um, Apostolic Faith of Bexley Branch, located on number 13, Penn Hill Road, DA5, 3EP. What you have just missed is just the prelude from our choir. We heard from them soon and very soon, and then I will make it all the way, the quartet. And to start off, we had the clarinet and um, violin duet. That is all you have missed. You can still join us. It's not too late. We just want to sing together now and continue with our service. And may the Lord bless you if you're able to do that. If not, you can as well just enjoy the service where you are. We sing together now hymn number 264, O wonderful, wonderful word of the Lord. We are taking verses 1, 2, and the last.
Kling! congregational prayer and that is going to be number two at the end of it. Our mighty fortress is our God. <laughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, how thankful we are this morning for your great love to us to sing a magnificent hymn like this among the righteous, to sing together with faith in our hearts and believing that you are 
a mighty fortress. You've proven to be that in our lives, oh God. You've answered our prayers, you've met our needs, and you're visiting us here in this place, in this congregation this morning, and we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and grace, and we're so thankful, Lord, that we found you to be exactly what we needed when we needed you the most, that you came to our rescue when we were desperate, and you changed our lives forever. And we thank you, Lord, this morning that we can gather in this place and worship you together to lift our voices in praise and believe that your presence is once again with us this morning. And we pray, oh God, that you would be in our midst in a mighty way, that the things that are accomplished here, Lord, would be according to your will. And, oh Lord God, that we would be your humble servants as we go about each and every day and energized from this place, armed with the truth of God. Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless every part of this service. We're Amen. thankful for those that have ministered to us this morning in song yeah. and in music. Yeah. And we pray, O oh Lord God, as this service continues, that your presence would continue to abide. Amen. And that the word that's read to us this morning would be exactly what we need to hear. And from the pulpit this morning, yes. that you would bless your minister, Amen. and that our hearts would, O oh Lord God, uh, cling to the word that is presented to us, and that we would hear it with joy and gladness. Amen. Bless us in this place, and especially, uh, Lord, as we begin this service this morning with prayer, as we end it, O oh Lord God, that you would answer each one as they bring their petitions before you. You know, Lord, that you have the answer to everyone's needs, and the blessing is ours if we'll but believe. So God bless us this morning as our earnest prayer. Amen. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bye. 
our Bible reading for this devotional service is taken from the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 24 all the way to 32. Romans 1, 24. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own, bo- their own bodies between themselves, who change the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is also which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, bond in their lust one toward another, men with men, walking that which is unseemly and unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Oh 
must fall Amen. to the ground. Amen. God never failed. He stood back of his promises. Walls had to crumble as the march around. God, any rivers you think are uncrossable? God, any mountains you can't turn all through? Our God. Specializes in those things thought impossible. He does the things others cannot do. His, his word is dependable. He'll make a way through the waters for you, for me, for us. Life situations by him are amendable. Mountains and hills, he will part for you too. God, any mountains you cannot tunnel through, my God specializes, our God specializes in those things thought impossible. He does the things all the going to read from part of the text that we used for our Sunday school this morning, taken from the book of Romans, the first chapter, Romans chapter 1, I'm reading verse 18, we have all included this text in our Sunday school that we studied for this week. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. One of the um, starkest warnings that we have in the Bible to those who live a Christian life is contained in this very verse, and that is, if you don't want the wrath of God upon your life, and I want to believe we all don't want that. If you don't want the wrath of God upon your life, don't crush the truth that you know. Don't suppress the truth that you know. Don't kill or chain the truth that you know. Looking at the original word used there on hold. I think one example I can think of is um, perhaps some of us have seen situations where policemen, they're trying to restrain someone who is not cooperating. Someone that just wants to have his own way in one way or another and they have to hold him down until perhaps they put handcuff or something like that. We have even had instances in the past when they are trying to do this that some people may even die. And as I was thinking about that, it is possible that some people have the truth of God and we thank God that God has given us his truth 
It isn't that we haven't known or we don't know the truth. The problem has to do with what we are doing with the truth that we have known. Without grace, we are all ungodly people. We are all unrighteous people. We will naturally suppress the truth in unrighteousness. But thank God there is a remedy. Amen. The issue here is about how people lie, people that are like us, they are bent right from birth to distort the truth, to suppress the truth. When, in fact, the truth is given to set us free. And it is the prayer of my heart, even from the word of Jesus Christ himself that said that ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. The truth is not meant to bind us. The truth is not meant for us to overpower it. We want to surrender, submit ourselves to the truth so that the truth can overpower us. Amen. So that the truth can have effect upon our lives. Amen. When the truth hunts and corners us up, some people would like to dodge the truth distort the truth, evade the truth. And Sister Muriel, I was listening to the Sunday school this morning when um, she was giving one of the examples of such a thing as excuses. Some people like to give excuse for everything about the truth, all just to suppress the truth, all just to hold the truth down instead of submitting themselves to the truth. Some people we even want to blame others. Um, and when that doesn't work, they will deflect and they do anything that can just hold down the truth of God that they know. And this is what this text is talking about. But the most important point, I think, is the verse before that, verse 17, that says that, for therein is the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. As the wrath of God is revealed, so also the righteousness of God is revealed. Amen. For, herein, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. What is the truth being suppressed here in this passage as we have studied during the course of the week on the uh, Sunday school based on warnings on idolatry. We have this listed out or explained in verses 19 through to 23. The truth being suppressed here is something that these people have known about God. So God is not requiring from you and I something that we don't know. It is what we know that God is asking us uh, um, to respond to, to do something about. These people they are suppressing what they have known about God in terms of his eternal power, his divine nature. They are denying his glory. Um, they didn't want him in their knowledge. They would like to change his glory to idol, and thereby they suppress the truth. May we not suppress the truth. Amen. They suppress the truth. They hid it, ran from it, exchanged it, distorted it. They became blind to it. And finally, they overpowered the truth inside them, in their heart, in their mind. Let's be clear. The word of God is the truth. Yes. We, we cannot be above the word of God. No. Yes. The word of God is above. Yes. We are all under. Yes. However, from the truth that has been revealed to us, we should have that inside us and let that have effect on us. But the unfortunate thing is that some people are holding that truth in unrighteousness. What is the reason? The mind evades the truth. What is the reason? The mind will twist the truth, distort the truth, manipulate the truth, and suppress the truth. It is because the mind likes to take pleasure in unrighteousness. And it is very clear that you cannot love sin and at the same time love the truth. 
You can't love sin and love the truth. You either love the truth or you love your sin. If you are not saved and you are present here this morning, it is the prayer of my heart that you will lose Amen. that truth. Amen. You will allow Amen. that truth. Amen. You will permit that truth Amen. to work in your life. Amen. For until you permit it, until you give way to it, to work in your life, the, the, the truth will just be there. But glory be to God. The Lord can help us Amen. to allow the truth to achieve something special in our life. Amen. One other reason why people like to suppress the truth is that the truth is too threatening. It will take away your illicit pleasures, and that is what unrighteousness is all about. Unrighteousness is loving sin more than loving God. Some people like to hide from the truth. I think I've said this many times, that when I used to be uh, um, a plumber in uh, an industry back in Nigeria, and I, I have many friends, and one of my friends from time to time, I like to share the truth with him, and he would tell me that I don't want to listen to you because I know if I listen to you and you tell me the truth, I am responsible. But if I don't listen, I am not responsible. The truth is too threatening. But we thank God for the truth. Because the only way we can have freedom is by having the truth. There is no other thing that can liberate us other than the truth. Do you want liberation? Do you want freedom? Allow the truth. And I'm not talking of the truth that I know. I'm talking of the truth that you know. The one that God knows you know. God himself knows what we know. It doesn't matter what people might say to us in terms of, I know you should know this. I know you should be able to do that. And I'm not saying that we cannot be of help to each other. However, ultimately, God knows what you know. God has a record of what I know. And when we submit ourselves to the truth, the truth will work. Amen. The truth will achieve the purpose for which the truth is sent to us. Amen. Unrighteousness is a, a kind of a life orientation that goes with ungodliness. When you then combine that with rejecting the truth, is a kind of a lifestyle that I will advise anyone not to pursue. Mm -hmm. If you know the truth and you suppress it and you make the decision to even get to the extent where you thumb your nose at God and you say you live your own way. I do it the way I like. You will know the wrath of God. And we don't want to know the wrath of God. From verse 24 through to 32, you can see there described the wrath of God. Three times it was mentioned, God gave them up. God gave them up. God gave them up. May God not give us up. Amen. It's the same thing when Jesus Christ said in Luke 12, 47, that that servant that knew his Lord's will but did not will be beaten with many stripes. I don't want one stripe from God. No. Not to talk of many. Many stripes. May God deliver us from that. Amen. And we want to do everything to avoid the danger of suppressing the truth. Well, has this been done before? Has this happened before? In the book of um, Psalm, the book of Psalm 81, we have there recorded by Asaph, the psalmist of Psalm 81, verses 11 and 12, but my people will not echo to my voice, and Israel will none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart lost, and they walked in their own counsels. May God not give us up. Amen. When we are giving up to our own heart lost and our own counsels, you can imagine that. Downward course to hellfire. May God deliver us from that. Amen. When you hold on the truth of God, and what do we even mean by this truth of God? The gospel. 
When you hold down the truth of God, what are we referring to? The sermons that we hear from time to time? Even in the Sunday school. See that wonderful Sunday school that we all shared together this morning? That's the truth of God. That's the truth. The instructions, the godly counsels, which are meant for correction, which are meant for reproof, which are meant for our growth, which are meant to change us, which are meant for us to profit by. When we suppress that, we, we destroy ourselves. We don't want to destroy ourselves. And God doesn't want us to do that. Some people also would like to suppress the truth by, have you heard people trying to say that, but she doesn't do it. He is not doing it. Something is telling them in their hearts what is right. And in order for them to suppress it, they like to compare. In order for them to suppress it, they like to make excuses. In order for them to suppress it, they like to complain. But the truth is there. And God knows that the truth is there. They may even be checking on other people instead of checking on themselves. All they are trying to do many times, most times, is that the truth that they should respond to so that they can achieve something in their lives, that they are trying to just quash it, just quash it. Just, just as if one can just do like this and then the truth will go away. It won't go away. The truth will be there saying, I am here. I am here. You know the truth. May God give us the grace to do the truth. We have many examples in the Bible. Think about Eve. You think Eve did not know the truth? She did. Because when serpent came to her, she said, God as said. Serpent only needed to change those three words around. Serpent only needed, instead of starting with God, he put God in the middle. As God said, and change the tonation of it. But still the same three words. God has said, as God said. The difference in those two statements is hell and heaven. Had it been that Eve had stopped when the truth was coming from inside her saying, God hath said. God hath said. And then Satan, I don't even know, I have no idea, I have not studied to that extent of knowing uh, the nature of this serpent before the fall because he spoke. Serpent spoke. Maybe before the fall. And again, we all know the story to some extent. I want to believe when God cursed serpent to now be walking on his belly, maybe before serpent was like, like me. I don't know. Maybe he was just talking as normal. Eve should have said, serpent, I don't know what you know. I don't know the truth you have, but God has said to me. Amen. I don't know what God has said to you, do what God has said to you, and I will do what God has said to me. If Eve had stopped at God has said, and then closed her ears to every other thing that Satan was saying, everything would have been perfect. But when then um, you started to think about it, the rearrangement, as God said, okay, did I get it wrong? You started making some uh, rationalization, a way of suppressing the truth when the truth will always be saying, God has said. God, uh, did I get it wrong? Maybe if we we'll be thinking of something like that. Then started to be looking at that thing again. It looks nice. This fruit stretched forth our hand. I always say that Satan did not pluck that fruit and gave to Eve. Eve stretched forth our hand plucked it. I wasn't in the garden, but perhaps maybe we were just still looking. But then the thing would be saying, God has said. God has said. And we're still looking. Look, it looks nice. It's desirable. Can I? And the thing we still be saying, God has said. God has said. Is that not what the truth does with all of us? Every time? Thank God for the Spirit of God. Amen. 
sending is a, a, a way of reminding us God has said. The thing is going to the mouth. God has said. God has said. God has said. Took it bite. May God help us. Amen. When we know the truth, and what did Eve see? Eve saw the wrath of God. May we not see the wrath of God. Amen. He ate and she ate and she died. How about Belshazzar? That king who took over from Nebuchadnezzar and then decided in pride, decided to do things unthinkable. And he knew. I think the point I'm driving at here is if you know the truth, God is not going to judge us on what you don't know. It's only what you know. And remember all the time, that's why we warn ourselves, don't compare yourself with anybody because God knows what you know. That other person, God understands him or her. God knows why he or she may be doing or may be whatever. But you just focus on what you know God has told you. Belshazzar saw what happened to uh, the Nebuchadnezzar, how he was so great, his heart was lifted, his mind hardened in pride, he was de deposed, and then God changed his heart and gave him the heart of a beast. To the extent that a whole king became an animal. A whole king, I wonder what he was eating, now had to be, maybe with the hand or with the mouth, grass, grass. Belshazzar knew all this. And when Nebuchadnezzar humbled himself and God restored him, Belshazzar knew. And when now Belshazzar took over, he decided to forget the truth that he knew. And no wonder Daniel, that was called, when that handwriting was many tekel opasin, written, and Daniel was called, Daniel was able to say in Daniel 5.22, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thy heart, even though you know these things. You know them. Why are you doing something different from what you know? As a result of that, you have been weighed in the balance of what you know. You have been weighed in the balance, and God has found you wanting. God is going to weigh what you know against what you are responding to and what you are doing. And it's not going to be, I'm 90, I am 90 percent, so I'm okay. Mm -mm. It's going to be like this. Have you heard that you need to be saved from your life of sin? It goes into the balance. Where you done like that. All right? And then you pray, and then you are saved. Balance. All right? Amen. Have you heard that you need to be sanctified? Tilt you like that. Then you pray, and then you are sanctified. Balance. You know those balances they use in those, those days? They still use it in some markets. Not the one that we stand on now and is digital. The one that has two sides to it. And then you hearing the word of God, jumping into one side and then your response on the other. God wants us to balance. God wants us to respond to the truth that we know. But for this man, you have been checked. You have been weighed against the truth that you know, and you are now found wanting. If you are present here today, and the Spirit of God is telling you that in this area of the truth that you know, you are wanting, thank God that we are here today. Amen. Thank God that we can pray to God. Amen. Thank God that there is still hope. Amen. So that we can cry to God, say, God, help me. Amen. Have mercy upon me, Amen. and the Lord is going to help. Amen. Well, because that happened, he died. He was killed that same night. There was another case of a man of God and an old lying prophet. 
recorded in the first Kings chapter 13. Well, this man of God was sent an errand by God to deliver God's message to Jeroboam, who was at the altar at the time. And then Jeroboam was wondering, who is this? Oh, what can you say that to me? He stretched forth his hand. And God said, that hand will not return. The hand just stayed like that. And then when he found out, what did he do? He decided to ask for prayers from the man of God. And the man of God prayed for him, and he was healed. Amen. And the man of and the, the, the old prophet now said, ah, I'm sorry, the Jeroboam now said, the king now said, please come to my house. I need to give you food. I need to give you reward. Meanwhile, the truth with God had spoken to the man of God said no. Because God had told him, no food, no drink. Don't even stop to do anything. And the man of God was able to stand. Even if you will give me so many things, the word of God is that I should not eat or drink. He passed. And he left. May God deliver us from old prophets. Amen. Now this old prophet heard about it. And then he sent for him. He tried to look for him. And then the old prophet was like, I need to invite you. And you know what? The truth came up again inside the man of God. No, God has told me. Truth will always speak. When the truth speaks to us, may God help us to listen Amen. and obey Amen. and take action immediately. Amen. The truth came up inside him. He told this old prophet too, I am not going with you. The word of God has told me that I should not. I am a prophet like you are. An angel has appeared to me. Perhaps qualified it like, you, are, you, you must be hungry. God has sent you an errand, and God has sent his angel to tell me to feed you, to strengthen you. But I want to, I, I, I trust God. I, 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 I believe the, the Spirit of God will be telling him the truth will be coming. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't go. If I want to tell you something, I was the one who sent you, I have some other ways of telling you myself, or even if I want to send someone to you, I will convince you of that. But this one, don't go. I want to believe that. But um, a man of God, he was not given any name, he was only called in the Bible, a man of God. So when some people greet you these days and they say man of God, you better be careful. Anyway, he agreed, and then he went with him. They got home, and then if you read that um, uh, account very well, I think, I don't know at what point, I was trying to understand that account as I was reading. I don't know at what point that God himself now spoke to the lying prophet to talk to him. God did not send another prophet the same prophet that lied to him, now that same prophet now, God, just to let him know that you did not obey the truth. You did not listen to the truth. So the same lying prophet now gave the judgment to him. How can you put that together? And God is righteous. The Bible says that immediately after that, in that account, he still finished his food. Perhaps he was hungry. Some verses after that, he continued, he finished. And the old prophet gave him some things and whatever, then he left. And the Bible tells us that the lion met him and killed him. Did not eat him, did not touch the uh, mule or the um, donkey that he was riding. That lion was sent by God. I'm sending you to only one person. Killed him, a uh, man of God, and the lion stood there. The wrath of God. May we not see the wrath of God. Amen. It's a very dangerous thing to suppress the truth that we know. We don't want to give any excuse. Some of these people can, could have given excuse. We know Eve could have said that, did, did she not do it? It's not me, it's the serpent. 
when God started with uh, uh, Adam, it's not me, the wife you gave me. Excuses have always been there. May God deliver us from excuses. Amen. May God, instead of excusing ourselves, may God help us to just surrender immediately. Amen. I did it. Yeah. And confess to God, and God is merciful. Yeah. He will forgive us. Yeah. No, no excuse. I don't know. Maybe this man of God prayed. The Bible did not tell us that. He was going. Perhaps he was still thinking, maybe I didn't hear right. Uh -uh. God sent you to me that I needed food. Uh, an angel, you are a prophet like me. And I've just finished food, and then you are telling me the judgment of God. I don't know. I don't know what was going on in his mind until he was killed. God would not listen to any excuse. That's the point I'm trying to make. God wants us to be honest and be truthful to the word of God that we know. We can be like other people that obey the truth, and God bless them. Amen. The three Hebrew children, they knew the truth. They stood by the truth. They, they, Bow down. We are not even going to attempt to even do a little bit. Perhaps the enemy will be there. Obey them that have the rule over you. Obey the kings. Obey the rulers. I know, Satan, you are the one saying this. God, God's work cannot contradict itself. God has said that I should not bow down to any idols. So the king now asking me to do that. I, I, I better obey God and disobey man because I know the truth. The truth is telling me, don't bow down. The three Hebrew children, did they not take their stand? They did. They were thrown into the fire. Did God leave them there? God will deliver us. When we stand for the truth that we know, when we practice and we do the truth that we know, instead of suppressing the truth, we surrender ourselves like Daniel 2 was told, no prayer. No prayer. I know the truth. If I don't pray, my life is finished. So I will follow the truth that I know. It's going to be lion's den. You will go. If that is, if that is it, I will obey. Amen. Did God leave uh, Daniel in the lion's den? No. Thank you, Lord. God will work miracles Amen. in our lives Amen. if we will not suppress the truth but obey the truth. Amen. May God give us the grace to obey the truth. God can help us to cooperate. God can help us to surrender totally. And I'm just wondering whether there is anyone in this assembly listening to me that is holding down the truth that you know. God is saying you can be delivered today. God is saying you can have victory today. God is saying you can allow that truth to come out and overpower you. Let that truth come out and uh, 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 achieve the purpose for which God has sent that truth into your life. Do you feel like opening up to God and say, God, here am I, have mercy upon me. That truth that I know, that I have not been obeying, that truth that I know, that I have problem with, that truth that I know, I need to do something about it, and I have not, I've heard that you can give me the power. I've heard that you can help me. And when you do that, God will certainly help you. The altars are open. You are invited to come to the altar and pray. God bless you as we sing him just as God who reigns on earth.
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth. Thank you for Jesus Christ, who is the revelation of the truth. It is your love that has made this truth to be revealed to us. Help us, O Lord, to examine ourselves and to abide by the truth. For when we do these things, we will never be lost. Come and help us, Father, as we go on our knees, that we do your will forever and ever, and to meet you in heaven at last. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.